Hello. Uh, a bunch of people have been asking me about these, um, about the ty type of tablet that I use. Um, you know, some people want to go out and get one. Uh, so I just want to explain a little bit more about, you know, in depth uh, about this this Cintiq. It's spelled C I N T I Q C Charlie India uh, November Tango India Quebec. Cintiq. This is a Cintiq 12 W X. Means it's 12 inches di uh, diagonally. Um, it is a tablet display. What happens is when you plug this into the computer, uh, it's going to. Uh, there's two plugs. There's one plug which is um, a DVI input that goes into your video card. Your computer senses this as a monitor. There's another plug, and that one is a, a USB plug. And that plugs in and it sees it as just you know an Intuos 3 tablet. So it, it's basically two devices that have been stuck together in one. It's it's a, it's a digitizer, an Intuos 3 digitizer, and it's also a, a display at the same time. It has, um, you know, you can draw on it, it's pressure sensitive, it senses angle, um, you know, there's, there's a, you can use uh, any kind of Intuos 3 stylus. There are two types of styluses. There's the, uh, the, the standard stylus, which has a, a two-state rocker switch, you know, for right click and middle click, and then your left click's on the tip. And then this one, which has absolutely no buttons whatsoever, but is capable of sensing tilt, and you know it's it's like a marker, right? So it's it's, it's a chisel, chisel tip marker. This is a hack driver. Okay, I'm using a hack DLL. Uh, I had to go and stub the DLL myself on Windows XP. I am not offering this DLL, um, you know, to the public because it's it's heavily tied into all of my hardware, it's tied into my MIDI foot pedals, it's tied into a, a game controller, um, you know, there's there's a whole bunch of things and it's just too much trouble for me to go and customize this thing for everyone. I'm afraid I didn't make a nice user interface for it, so that's why, don't ask me for it. Okay, um, this thing, this tablet display has two sets of these little buttons on the side, probably better if you, a lot easier to see, here we are. You know, there's these buttons can be customized to send hotkeys or mouse button clicks. There is a touch strip. This sends mouse wheel, so you can you know you can use it to zoom in and out. It can be customized to do different things, and it's mirrored on the other side. So you know, if you are left-handed or right-handed, you can configure either side for use. You know, ambidextrous. The only problem is that this touch strip. These touch strips are very easily accidentally you know uh, brushed. You know, I mean, the palm of your hand is going to brush it. When your when your stylus is in the way, I don't know why Wacom didn't make it so that it should it, it should have automatically disabled if it detects a stylus that is you know kind of aligned and aimed towards this thing. But they didn't think of that. They have no plans of changing that. You know, so hey, go to the forum and complain. You'll have to disable this the the, the side that your hand is on because it will get in the way. It will you know it's 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 going to mess you up. There are. A bunch of other problems with this, with, with having these Cintiq displays. Um, some people couldn't stand them. They just, you know, right at the uh, dealer store, they decided not to buy one. There are a number of reasons why um, you might not want to get a Cintiq. The first one is, is the whenever you're drawing, no matter you whether you're using a real tablet like like just a regular Intuos tablet, or you are using an integrated display, wherever that cursor is, that mouse cursor is, that's king. That is where the line comes out of. The line does not come out of this tip. The line comes out of that cursor. And that wouldn't be a problem except for the fact that the stylus, um, if, if you, if, I don't think you can really see, you can't see from this from this view, but there is sometimes a little bit of an, off, of an offset, maybe about a millimeter's worth of offset. And if you're using a very fine pen brush, that can throw you for a loop. That can really confuse you. That um, that's probably one of the reasons why people hate Cintiqs because there is a slight offset, and it's enough to drive you insane. It's enough to drive some people insane. And I've had a Cintiq for well since they came out. I I, I had the the 18SX. Um, it's not their, their it's not their very first one, but I've had you know I've been working with Cintiqs for about five years. Um, you know, it, 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 I've, it's taken me some time to get used to it. I had to develop ways to, to deal with that. And one of these ways of, of dealing with um, a tablet not going where you want it to go is having to not look at the stylus tip, looking at the cursor position and looking at where the cur make, making sure that cursor position is sitting on top of, you know, wherever it is that you need to go and rehearsing the stroke. That means moving your hand back and forth, you know, 
moving the cursor, not moving your hand, but moving the cursor over these two points and then applying pressure when you're, you're ready. It means every stroke must be rehearsed. You must tap, tap the two dots and when you actually make the stroke, the idea is that you just apply, the, that's when you actually apply pressure. The other thing that's important is that you must use minimal finger movement. These tablet displays are plastic or glass, uh, I'm not sure what, what the surface is, um, but it is very slippery. It's not like paper. It is, it is slippery and for those of you who are used to drawing with your fingertips, and drawing with your wrist, this is going to throw you off because you're normally used to the breaking action of the paper and, the, and, and the, the, the wearing graphite or the felt tip to give you that necessary friction. It does not work here. It does not work here. You have to use your stylus, hold your stylus at the position that you that you want to um, you know to generate the kind of line that you want, right? And then you have to use you have to move your entire arm. You have to you have to keep your wrist and fingers steady. See that how my how my hand is is completely solidified. It means that no matter where this hand goes, you know the 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 angle of the stylus does not change. So you move, you angle the stylus, you solidify your hand, you lock your hand down, and then you make the movement. That is how you work on a Cintiq. Instead, if you're looking for breaking action for the paper, you won't have it. All you can rely on is the surface of your hand. Use that to give yourself some breaking action. If you're if you're if you're a sweaty guy and you have you know hands that that, that have a lot of moisture, then you're going to have to have to adjust your your position to use just you know a couple knuckles. You know your your. I don't have a single way to hold my my hand. I use different hand positions all the time, and I shift my that same hand position all over. So this is something that you just have to get used to. You have to. You just have to practice. You, you have to practice, you have to work out the discipline, and you have to get used to being flexible with your hand. These things are not perfect. Okay, the, the, the cursor does rarely goes, you know, the, it rarely matches up with the line. If you need, um, your hand is going to get in the way. If you're used to a standard tablet, your hand will get in the way. The only way to work around that is you have to lift up your hand or you have to you know see where you're gonna go because there's that blind spot you'll have to rotate things out of the way um, you might have to pan things so that they're out of underneath your hand or you can do what I do and that is you rehearse your your, your, your stroke you, you rehearse going through that path then you go and you hit it that's how you deal with the blind spot is you know by rehearsing making sure that that curve passes through getting that feeling and then just that's how you get the precision. Um, there's, it's, it's never just, you know, kind of a blind thing. Um, over here in the corners, these these areas, um, when you're using a very precise tool, um, you will find that the line is going to wobble right about within an inch of the border. These areas here, where the sensor density is le is is a lot less. Um, there's a fair amount of uh, EMI, electromagnetic interference, from all of my other devices in the room, your cell phone, microwave, you know, uh, leaky microwave, whatever, whatever it is. It's going to cause the, this, this cursor to undulate. It's going gonna, it's gonna to wiggle. It's going to wiggle. And I'm going to prove this by taking the transparent ruler. Okay. And you'll find that right around on the edges, if we look here, you're going to see that line is, is kind of wiggly, right? If I use the ruler on the middle se section of the uh, display, you know, it's nice and straight. So there is interference, there's, there's going to be some interference here around the sides. When you calibrate your tablet, they give you two points to click on. Yeah, those points are sitting right at the edge of the, uh, of, of the, 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 the twilight zone. Great, great work, Wacom. Um, you know, it's it's the these things are far from perfect, um, but it, it's just something that after five years, you know, I've learned to accept and adapt to some of the temperamental nature of these tablets. They are not perfect. Um, you know, don't rush out to go out and get one. Try one in the store first. Um, that's about all I have to say on these tablets.